Glory to God. I want to welcome you to SOV. And I am your host. But today, in store, we have Pastor Calvin Bosley. And he's going to come to you with the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His Word shall continually be in my mouth. First of all, giving God thanks for blessing me to be out here to minister his word unto his people. And also giving thanks to Sister Vicki Lee, whom God used to open this door to minister. And I truly thank you for allowing me to come into your home. And tonight I would like to just minister to you the word of God. But before I get into the word, I would just like to just give a testimony about some of the things that that God is doing. You know, they say uh, in Hollywood that God is dead, but God is not dead. About two months ago, there was a man that the doctors had gave up. He had AIDS. Matter of fact, it took three men to sit him down and move him around. But myself and a couple of sisters, we went and we prayed for that man that had AIDS. And God healed him. Not only did God heal him, he did not need anyone to carry him anymore. I am talking about a God that is able to do anything but fail. And I want you, my friends, that are in your home, it doesn't matter what you're going through or how you're going through it. I just want you to know that God is a deliverer. Tonight, I want to speak to you tonight about uh, how God appeared to King Solomon after he had built his own house and built a temple and dedicated uh, the house to God. And the Bible said that God appeared to Solomon and God was well pleased with Solomon because Solomon had completed the work and building the temple. And I would like to just read to you a few verses now. Second Chronicles 7, verse 12, 13, and 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayers, and I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Tonight I want to use as a subject the secret of prosperity. You know, uh, we have a lot of folks nowadays, they are selling formulas to prosperity. But I want to tell you that the key to prosperity is loving God, keeping your mind focused on God. Uh, as the Word of God tells us about King Solomon, he worked diligently until he got the temple built. And once he got God's temple built, then God came and spoke to him. First, I would like to let you know something about Solomon. Now, Solomon was a man that was born through uh, uh, David, his father, uh, through a lady named Bathsheba. You remember, Bathsheba was the woman that David committed adultery with. But God also gave David and Bathsheba a wise son, and his name was Solomon. Solomon loved God with all his heart, and his only thought was to please God. So God gave Solomon the formula for prosperity. God said that if his people, which are called by his name, if they will humble themselves and pray. So it's important to pray. It's important to stop always trying to do things your way. 
You know, there are people, they got rules, they got plans, they got goals. But let me tell you something. Until you commit your plans to God, you will have a nervous breakdown and nothing will work. God said the secret to prosperity is humble yourself. Know that you cannot do anything by yourself. If you even breathe, God has to give you the strength to do that. Let me tell you about Solomon. God gave Solomon over three gold mines. And even today, King Solomon gold mine in South Africa is still producing gold. And the reason uh, Solomon was so prosperous and reason God gave him gold and silver and honor because the man prayed. And I'm talking to you nowadays. Now, now we have a lot of teaching about the year of Jubilee and that the blessings of God is just going to fall on you. But let me tell you something. The blessings of God will fall upon you if you pray. If you seek God through fasting and living holy, there's no other way. If you get blessed without living humble and holy, you end up just like the devil. The Bible said that Satan got kicked out of heaven. And if you try to seek prosperity, if you try to seek peace without focusing your attention on God, you are going to fail. As long as Solomon sought God, the Bible tells us that Solomon had a peaceful reign in his kingdom. Do you know as you seek God with all of your heart, you will have peace in your home? You know, a lot of our children nowadays, it seems like that they are the devil themselves. And the reason for that is because you're not praying. I want you to began to focus your attention on prayer again. There is no drug that God cannot set your child free from if you would humble yourself and pray. Now, when you pray, you must repent too. Because a lot of things happen to individuals is because of sin. And not only do your children become renegade, but do you know that you can get sick in your body because of sin? There are people that will go to a motel with some lady or some man for 30 minutes of pleasure, and they'll walk out of that motel with a death sentence in their body. So you must pray, and after you done prayed, you must live holy because Pleasure and sin will cause you to get sick and die. And they got some disease nowadays that not even the doctor can hear, can cure. And so I want you, my friend, to pray. Seek God with your whole heart. And there is no disease that will attach itself or will try to attack it itself to you that God will not deliver you from if you pray. You know, Jesus said, when I come back to earth, would I find faith? Prayer is so powerful that the Bible said that Elijah prayed earnestly that it wouldn't rain. And the Bible said that it did not rain for three and a half years. So if a man can pray that it will not rain, and if it don't rain, do you know that whatever needs you have in your life, that God will, will, will meet those needs if you pray? You know, the Bible even tells us there was a man named King Hezekiah. God sent Isaiah to him and said, get your house in order, because if you don't, you're going to die and not live. And the Bible said when Hezekiah found out that he was going to die. The word of God said that he began to pray. He began to tell God, God, when I was, when I was in my prime of my life, I did the best I could to, to please you. And I, get, I did those things that was right in your sight. And the Bible said that Hezekiah began to weep. He began to cry. And as he began to weep and cry, the Bible said that God spoke to Isaiah and said, Isaiah, go back and tell Hezekiah that I have seen his tears 
and I've heard his prayers, and I will add 15 years unto his life. And the Bible said that God gave this man another 15 years to live because he turned his face to the wall and prayed. I want you to begin to pray. God gave me a vision the other night that a tornado was coming across this land. And the tail of that tornado was a big old snake. And that big old snake was moving slowly. And wind was following that big snake. And there was destruction everywhere. So I am calling you to prayer. I'm calling you to begin to seek God with your whole heart because, you know, even the, the feds do not know what is going to happen day to day. You know, Chairman Greenspan, he had an economic summit meeting, and he said that he just didn't know what was happening because our stock market has been going up and down up and down. Yes, we are living in a time, <clears throat> excuse me, we are living in a time when the stock market is higher than it's been in history. But during the 1929 depressions, people was living good. They was making all kind of money and in one day there was a market crash and depression came People were starving. Folks had lost all of their monies. The banks were shut up. There was food lines. <clears throat> and I'm warning you now to pray. God said that if my people, which are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray, God said, then I'll hear from heaven. You know, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And I want you to look into this TV camera. I don't care what's wrong with you. Even if you need a job, if you, if, if you need a home, if the electric man say that he's coming to turn your lights off, I want you to look into this camera right now because the word of God and the Holy Spirit is moving forth to meet your every need. The Bible said that the spirit of God was present to heal and God is still healing those that will humble themselves and pray. I know of incidents that this one man got both of his legs cut off and he was poor and they put wooden prosthesis on him. A man of God told him, I want you to go and buy your pair of shoes. And the man thought that the man of God was making fun of him, but God spoke to him and said, obey my servant. The next day he went to this shoe store and he told the shoe clerk, he said, I want to bear, buy a pair of shoes. And the shoe clerk said, well, what size? He said, size eight. And the shoe clerk told him to sit down. So the man sat down and the man, shoe clerk, came out from the stock room with a pair of uh, size eight shoes, black. And then he asked the man, he said, would you like to put them on? And then when he looked down at the man's wooden prosthesis, uh, legs. He said, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't know that you had a problem. The man said, well, no, that's okay. Give me the shoes. And that man put those wooden